time there, okay? So be yeah. decreasing 35 minutes. Morning. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the type 1 plus type 2 seesaw mechanics in a two-heat doublet model. And this kind of model is uh, are two heat doublet models with extra U1 gauge symmetry. And this talk is based in these two papers. Okay. Okay. The motivations to work with two heat doublet models with extra U1 gauge symmetry, among others, are these ones. This kind of model generates or gives a gauge solution to the flavor chart flavor changing neutral current interactions, naturally can incorporate neutrino masses. A whole class of models is generated by the idea, a new vector gauge boson that has mass and kinetic mixing with the standard Z boson exists. Um, we have dark matter candidates, we have a rich phenomenology, and, and, and there are more motivations. Okay, let me say a few words about the ordinary two his doublet models the ordinary of course the main feature of ordinary two his doublet models is the existence of two doublets one more than the standard model case and that doublets has the same quantum numbers by the standard symmetry in this case we can generate this general yukawa lagrangian because the the quantum numbers of the doublets are the same then this term is gauge invariant by the uh, standard symmetry. And the idea is to, to avoid the interaction of the two doublets with the fermions, with the fil field fermions, because this kind of interaction generates the problem of flavor changing neutral interactions. Okay? Then, uh, because we have two sources for the masses of the, of the fermions. Then, uh, the way that the ordinary two his doublet models avoid the flavor changing neutral interaction is proposing an Z2 symmetry and by, by, two s by this symmetry the fields transfer in this way. Kay? And this is known as the natural flavor conservation criterion. And if in addition of uh, all fermions are even or transferred trivially by that symmetry, then the general Yukawa this general, sorry, this general Yukawa Lagrangian transfer in this Yukawa. And this Yukawa Lagrangian uh, avoid the flavor changing neutral interaction because one of the doublets is prohibited. Uh, we avoid the interaction of one of the doublets with all fermions. In this case, we are free of, an um, uh, of flavor changing neutral interactions problem. Okay, uh, of course, other choices of parities of the fermions generate different models. And we have type 1, type 2, type X, type Y, etc., etc. We have different models. And this is the type 1, 2 his doublet model in the ordinary case. Okay, about 2 his doublet models with extra U1X symmetry, then, uh, of course, these models also has two doublets, and the idea is to solve the problem of the flavor changing neutral interactions by gauge principles. How? Then we need that the doublets transfer in a different way by the new symmetry. We are introducing a new gauge symmetry, and to avoid the interaction of the two doublets with, the, with all fermions, we impose that the charts of the fields are different by this new gauge symmetry. That means that H2 is the charts of the field by the new U1 symmetry, and H2 is the charts of the field of the second doublet by this new symmetry. And if we impose this, this condition, we avoid the flavor changing neutral interaction. And we obtain the type 1 to his doublet model also uh, in the same way that in the ordinary case, but in this case we obtain this Lagrangian by gauge principles. We are avoiding the interaction of the phi one doublet with the fermions by gauge principles, imposing that the fields transfer that the doublets transfer in different ways. Okay, 
then we are working, we work in with this Lagrangian, with this model that is that Taiwan to his doublet model, the new Taiwan to his doublet model. And the invariance of this Lagrangian by the new symmetry, we know that this Lagrangian is invariant by the, by the standard model symmetry. Um, but the, the invariance of this Lagrangian, sorry, the, in the invariance of this Lagrangian by U1 transformations requires a relation, a set of constraints on the charge of the fields. We can see here that D is the charge of the dr quarks, U is the charge of the ur quarks, and E is the charge of the er leptons. And the invariance of this Lagrangian requires this set of constraints, okay? But besides this, besides these constraints, we need that the, the we need to work with an anomaly free to his doublet model because we are introducing a new gauge symmetry. This implies the need we to check the condition for an anomaly free model. And that means that we need to check these these constraints coming from the anomaly free. Then what did we do? We combine the constraint oh each one of these constraints generates an equation that is a relation among the charge of the fields. Then we have three here and six here. And what did we do? We combine the equation coming from this relation with these constraints. And in this way, we write the charge of all the fields as function of U and D, just. The charge of all the fields as function of U and D. In this case, we prove that, that, that these charge assignments uh, Res uh, respect all the constraints, the Lagrangian invariance and the free anomaly conditions, except, the, uh, except by this constraint. Then what happened with this constraint? The, uh, for this anomaly, we find this relation. Mm -hmm. Then to respect or to, to work with an anomaly free model, we need that this condition is e must be equal to zero. Then we have two ways to obtain this condition. The first is imposing that u equal minus 2d. Okay, is the first way we work with an anomaly free model. And the other way is adding right handed neutrinos, one for generation. And in this way, in both cases, this anomaly is canceled. Okay? Then we have two conditions, two ways to work with an anomaly free model. Imposing that the charge u equal minus 2d or introducing right-handed neutrinos one for generation and in these two ways we work with a free anomaly model okay what about the scalar potential okay the most general potential with for two doublets with hypercharge y equal one gauge invariant and invariant by the new gauge symmetry is this potential with these six terms okay we can see that the introduction, the introduction of that uh, of this new symmetry, uh, avoid the existence of these terms that are terms uh, uh, that are classical terms in the to his in the ordinary to his doublet models. Okay, but this the, uh, the the gauge invariance for the new group forbid uh, avoid the existence of these terms. Okay. Okay, about neutrino masses. The first scenario we work it is the scenario where right-handed neutrinos and an scalar singlet are added to the two his doublet model, and in this case we induce the Taiwan two his doublet the Taiwan seesaw mechanisms. Then, as I said you, if we were in a scenario where exists right-handed neutrinos, the charge of the fields are free. Okay. Then in this case, the charts of all fields are free as function of U and D because we introduce right-handed neutrinos, okay? The potential in this case is given by this potential. This potential is, is, the poten is this potential. The, uh, this potential is just with two doublets. Then as we are introducing a singlet, we need to couple the singlet with the doublets. Then we introduce these three new terms. The introduction of this last term requires a relation among the charge of the, of the, ch of the singlet and the doublets. 
for gauge invariance. The Yukawa Lagrangian relevant for the neutrino masses is given by this. Uh, this is the Lagrangian that give or generate masses for the neutrinos in the type one. The first term, term generate Dirac mass, and the second term generate Majorana mass terms for the for the right-handed neutrinos. And after the spontaneous symmetry breaking, we generate this mass matrix. Kay. This is the classical mass matrix for the type one CISO mechanism. And if we were in that lim in the CISO limit, we diagonalize by blocks this matrix and obtain that ma this matrix for the light neutrinos and this matrix for the right neutrinos. And this matrix is diagonalized by the UPNMS matrix, and this matrix is diagonalized in other ways. Okay. Okay, but we we introduce this Lagrangian, we introduce this Lagrangian for generating masses for the for the neutrinos in the Taiwan CISO case. Then we need to check if these terms are invariants by the new symmetry. That implies that the charge of the fields must respect this constraint, and this constraint is satisfied, we prove. And on the other hand, the Majorana master is, is gauge invariant if satisfied this condition. Okay, we know the charge the, the charge of the right hand neutrinos. Then this term fixes the, the charge of that of the singlet by this new gauge symmetry. Then we have we we have fixed the charge of the second doublet, the couple to the fermions, the charge of the singlet, the charge of the singlet. And remember that we have a term in the potential that is a relation among the charge of the doublets and the singlet. That means that we have a value for the, se for the first doublet. Then we have fixed the charge of all the uh, scalars of the, of the, of the model. Okay. Okay. Here we, we can generate a whole class of models. We are working with a free with a freedom to choose the charge of the particles. The all particles, the charge of the particles has function of U and D. In this case, we can generate a whole class of models, a very large number of models. If we choose that the charge of the U qu UR quarks and DR quarks are equal to one over three, then the charge of the, the singlet and the first doublet is equal to two, and the charge of the second double doublet is equal to zero and this symmetry is identified to the biminosal symmetry okay and this symmetry is uh, spontaneously broken when phi s or the s or the singlet uh, generates a vacuum expectation value okay what is the the spontaneous symmetry breaking breaking pattern in this model okay the vet of vs said the scale at which the u1x symmetry is broken then we choose that this scale is TEF. The then V2 breaks the SU2 U1 group to the U1 electromagnetic group. And for the case of the v uh, V1 is, uh, value, we must respect this constraint because this constraint is, is coming from the masses of for, for the mass of the gauge boson. Then we have a freedom to choose the value of V1, but a freedom that must respect this constraint. The sum of the uh, square of the values of the vacuum expectation values must be equal to the value of the 246. Uh, okay, in, the in this first paper, we work it in this limit, the limit where Vs is greater than V2, greater than V1. And in this case, we need to, to do a fine tuning in this coupling. This coupling is the constant coupling of the new U1 model to obtain a Z prime boson that is lighter than the standard model. Then in this model, we have a new Z boson that is lighter than the Z boson, uh, the Z standard model boson. And we obtain this lighter boson uh, tuning this coupling. Of course, in this model, we also have o other, other properties. For example, we don't have in this model the pseudo-scalar particle because the pseudo-scalar particle has been absorbed by this Z prime boson to gain mass. Okay, 
here in this table we have uh, uh, we show the, 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 uh, a class of models generated in these Taiwan CISO mechanisms, for example. The first block, oh sorry, the first block of, of this table in a shows models that generates masses for the neutrinos and also prevent the model for of flavor changing neutral interactions. And these two models just save the model of flavor changing neutral interactions but can generate masses for the neutrinos. Okay. Because I, I in these cases u equal minus 2d and if u equal minus 2d we obtain the H1 equal H2 and this is forbidden because is this is the assumption we are doing to eliminate the flavor changing neutral interactions. Okay. It is important to remember this model here. This model is very known in the literature because in this model the charge of, the pa of all particles are zero by the new group. In this case we obtain a neutral current very interesting because I in this case we obtain the, the famous dark photon and the famous dark Z boson, as we will show you. Kay. The second scenario uh, we work is the scenario, the more general scenario. In this scenario, we introduce the two doublets, one singlet, right-handed neutrinos, and a triplet of uh, scalars. Kay. In this case, we can generate the Tai 1 plus Tai 2 CISO mechanism. Kay. Uh, the Lagrangian that generate the masses for the neutrinos in this case is the is this one. Uh, we can see that here we have a new term, the couple, the doublets, the, the, the leptons with the triplet of uh, scalars. And these terms are, are just the terms of the Taiwan CISO mechanism. Then we need, uh, we have right-handed neutrinos. As we know, if we have right-handed neutrinos, the charge of the fields are free parameters. And that we need now to know what is the charge of the triplet to work with an invariant U1x model. Then, in this case, the charge of the, of the particles are this one that are free parameters, and this is the charge of the triplet of scalars. This, with this charge, this term is gauge invariant for the new U1 symmetry. Uh, after the spontaneous symmetry breaking, we generate these masses, these matrices for the for the neutrinos. We ha we generate a Majorana mass term for the left-handed neutrinos, a Dirac mass term, and a Majorana mass term for the right-handed neutrinos. Okay, we define a six-dimensional vector to regrade the, the mass matrix in this way, and we have here the more general matrix for the neutrinos, where we have Major mass terms for the left-handed neutrinos, major mass terms for the right-handed neutrinos, and Dirac mass term. Okay. We will use a simplification, or we use it as simplification to analyze these the, the values of the uh, eigenvalues of this matrix. We use the simplification that these matrices are diagonals just to obtain the order of magnitude of the matrices. We know that is not possible, uh, physically it is not possible, but it's just to obtain the order of magnitude of the matrices. The eigenvalues of this matrix is are these ones. We have three, three degenerate values for the light neutrinos and three degenerate values for the heavy neutrinos. Um, basically, we work with three scenarios. The first scenario is in the case where the this parameter is greater than the other parameters, or just the, para the, the mass of the right-handed neutrinos is greater than the other parameters. In this case, in this case we obtain the masses of the, lef of the line neutrinos proportional to the parameter of the triplet of, of uh, scalars, and the masses of the heavy neutrinos proportional to MR. This is possible because if we want masses for the left for the line neutrinos of the order of electron volts, we need just to do that the vacuum expectation value of the triplet must be of the order of electron volts. And the mass of the right-handed neutrinos is free in this case. The, uh, 
the other case are these following two lines. In these two lines, we assume that this parameter is greater than the other parameters. In this case, we have a, pro a problem. I, in this case, we obtain that the masses of the light neutrinos and the heavy neutrinos are the generators. Okay? We have that the masses of left neutrinos is proportional to MD and the mass of the right-handed neutrinos or heavy neutrinos is MD also. And this is this scenario is not realistic because on one hand we have that the masses the the sum of the masses of the light neutrinos must be must respect this bound, okay? But if the this this mass this dimension of the masses of the left of the light neutrinos, as we show oh sorry is of the same magnitude of the heavy neutrinos. Then we, in, in this case, we have right-handed neutrinos with masses of the order of, order of electron volts. That is forbidden by cosmology, but is a possible solution for the problem that Carlos showed here. Uh, okay, how can we avoid, avoid this constraint? We can avoid this constraint if we assume that the that the right-handed neutrinos are not are unstable particles, but this is not the case in our in our model because in our model these right-handed neutrinos are stable particles because the only way they have to decay is through this Lagrangian. Then, through this term, then if we have right-handed neutrinos of order of one electron volt, it's kinematically forbidden to decay because he must decay into a rho two that is a Higgs. Higgs has a uh, heavy mass. Okay, and the last row, the last row is a similar case as the piece of the as the pseudo Dirac case. Okay, is ruled out also are the generator. Okay, in this general scenario, uh, we have here the the most general potential that include the two doublets, a singlet, and a triplet. This is the most general potential. This is the most general potential that include this, all these uh, scalars. And we divided this, uh, this potential in two parts, the Hermitian part and non-Hermitian part. For the non-Hermitian, we have three possibilities, depending on the charge of the phi one doublet. And then here, I show you the three possibilities, okay? And this is the general case. Remember that this is the general case when we are introducing right-handed neutrinos, uh, and doublets, triplet, and singlet. And finally, about the neutrino masses, uh, the, the third scenario we work at is the right-handed neutrinos and scalar singlet absent. Okay, as we have, as we don't have right-handed neutrinos, the charge of the particles are not free parameters. We are working in the scenario that u equal minus 2d, okay? And as we don't have singlet and we don't have right-handed neutrinos, then that just we have only one third in the Yukawa Lagrangian that generate masses for the neutrinos, is the triplet. Then uh, the six, six times six matrix uh, is just a three, three matrix that and Give mass, uh, give a Majorana master for the line neutrinos, and in this case the potential, uh, in the we have in the potential this term, and this term violate explicitly the lepton number, and this avoid the existence of a Majoran, and this is basically the tie two canonical CISO mechanism. This is a. This is the. Uh, uh, uh a special case of, of this general case that I show it. And this is these are here we have the condition for a tip uh, for a tie two CISO mechanism is the the talk of thesis. Okay. Okay. Uh, finally I I I want to say a few words about the gauge bosons and I'm going to say a few words of the physical gauge bosons and neutral currents in the case of the existence of two doublets and a singlet, just, okay? Because we are introducing a new gauge symmetry, we have 
uh, mixing between two abelian groups, okay? This mixing is given by this parameter, epsilon, okay? We have the gauge Lagrangian for the U1Y group, the gauge Lagrangian for the new U1X group, and this is the mixing of the two groups, okay? In this case, we write, we write the, the the covariant derivative in this way. The hat means that here we are we are not working yet with physical gauge bosons. We need to diagonalize to obtain the physical gauge bosons. And after that, we need to to do the Weinberg rotation also, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we can write the covariant derivative in this way, in terms of the photon, the Z0, and this X boson, okay? And from here, we derive the gauge boson masses, okay? After spontaneous symmetry breaking, we derive from this covariant derivative the gauge boson masses. And after the spontaneous symmetry breaking, we show that the, that the Z boson and the X boson has a, ma a mixing. And then we need to diagonalize this matrix by this transformation, and the agent values of this matrix uh, of this matrix are this one. This is the first agent value, the second agent value, and this is the angle that mix the two the two gauge bosons. This is a, a angle with a little value, is going is in the limit that going to zero. And okay, uh, in the limit that we work it the mass of the Z boson is practically the mass of the Z, Z standard model gauge boson, okay? And the mass of the Z prime boson is given by this relation here, okay? This is the, va the, the way we parameterize the angle with this, parameter, with this parameter is related to the mass mixing. This parameter is related to the kinetic mixing and if given by this expression. Here, okay. Okay, a few remarks in order to the Z prime. The Z prime mass is controlled by the GS coupling. Thus, in order to achieve a uh, light Z prime, we need to to modulate this value to do to to have a a low value for the GX. Uh, the Z prime mass is generated via spontaneous symmetry breaking, and for this reason, it depends on Vs, which set the U1 spontaneous symmetry breaking. And the Z prime, of course, depends on the charge of the doublets and the singlet. And in the case that this value is a uh, little value, we have this value for the mass of the Z prime boson. As I say, you we work it in the limit that this gauge boson is lighter than the standard model one. Okay, the uh, in the in the B minus L model, the mass of the Z prime boson is given by this relation. And if we want to if we work it in, in this range of masses, we need to have a value for the GX in this range also. And finally I want to show you the the phase of the currents of the neutral currents in this model. Remember that I say you that we have a model in which the charge of all the fermions are zero by the new one symmetry, U1 symmetry. Th in this case, in the case that we work it in, in a model with zero value for the charges of the fermions, we just work with this line, okay? This line is the contribution for when the charges of the fermions is different from zero, okay? Then when the charge of the fermions is equal to zero, we just have this neutral current. We have the electromagnetic interaction, the Z interaction as normal, and we have a very nice interaction of the Z boson. If we do the, this parameter, the, the mixing parameter equal to zero, then we have that the Z boson, Z prime boson interact as the as the photon, and in this case, this this boson is called the the dark photon because the interaction of the its interaction with the fermion is the same that the that the photon, but modulated by this parameter epsilon. If we do 
this parameter equal to zero, then the Z boson interact in the same way that the Z boson with the fermions, but modulated by this parameter. In this case, the, the Z boson is called the dark boson, the dark Z boson. Okay. As I say, you this this kind of model are, are very rich models, and the phenomenolo phenomenology of these models is we can study the phenomenology of this model as we did in the papers, uh, studying the the meson decays, the Higgs physics, atomic parity violation, neutrino electron scattering, muon muon anomalous magnetic moment, and different different phenomenology at high and low energy, then are very rich uh, models, okay? And here are the conclusions. Uh, two Higgs doublet models are an in interesting alternative to the canonical two Higgs doublet models. We avoid the flavor changing neutral interactions by gauge principle. Uh, and in, in this kind of model, we can implement in many ways the masses of the, f of the neutrinos. And okay, this is that. And we have this uh, nice Z prime boson that can be a dark photon or a dark C. Thank you. <laughs> Regarding the anomaly cancellation of the neutrino masses, uh, the second his doublet is not required at, at all, or 